Hallelujah. We're going to go back again to Numbers chapter 16. And then we're going to go to 1 Peter chapter 5. You know, if you're not careful, you can believe a lie of hell that would convince you that what you do is worthless. That you're just, it's not going to make any difference. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Where you just feel like, what difference is it making? And, and, and subtly, he, he, won't, he won't come and tell you that I want to take your purpose away. But when he convinces you that what you're doing is not going to get you what you desire, then underhandedly he begins to rob you of that sense of purpose. That you begin to do a lot of things and you begin to look at what you're getting and you begin to think, I'm not getting anywhere. You begin to think, I'm not, I'm not doing anything. Uh, and and before before you realize it, you wake up one morning, and 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 I'm always been convinced nobody gives up overnight. No, nobody nobody that throws in the towel overnight. But slowly ebbing each little reason and purpose. Well, and, and understand when the enemy shakes your foundation, then everything else comes easy. When when the enemy begins to shake the core person of who you are, anybody ever had their cage rattled? Now, I mean, you, you, you've just been rattled. The, everything that you believed, everything that you thought was true. It happens a lot of time when someone that you respect greatly or someone that you admire greatly falls, then you begin to question everything. You begin, but let me, let me reassure you that just because somebody else can't do it right, that doesn't mean that everything else is not right. Uh, understand, just, just because you fall on your bicycle one time doesn't mean you can't ride a bicycle. Uh, understand, we all have, have come short of the glory of God. I, I, I think we need to understand that tonight. We've all made mistakes and we've all, but if the enemy can get you to looking at those mistakes and looking at, 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 at where you're being instead of where you're going, then the things that you, you, you thought well, you was doing this far begin to be robbed from you. And when you lose sight of why you're in this thing, why, why, I'm convinced, and, and I'm, I'm getting more and more convinced that we need a fresh picture of, of, of Jesus. We, we need a fresh picture of heaven because if you think you're in this because you get to sing in the choir or because you get to play the drums or, or you, you get to you know, hug everybody because they can all think that you're good, you've missed it, folks. You've missed it. When you begin to live for God out of, out of means that bring self-gratification. Oh God, help me tonight. I need to get to my notes, don't I? Praise God. When we begin to live for God because it feels good for us, we've missed it. I, I, I begin to, to question when someone looks at me and says, well, I... I don't like doing that. Well, since when does living for God about what you like? I thought it was about what He liked. I thought it was about hearing, well done, thou good and faithful servant, not advisor. Some of us got it back. We think we're going to hear, well done, thou good and faithful advisor. He, he don't need advice. He knows what he's doing. He's been doing it a long time. And when we begin to question that, we begin to lose our purpose. And hear me tonight, I'm not going to talk about purpose that long, but when you lose your purpose, you lose yourself. It's then that you begin to do things that you wouldn't normally do. Because in losing your purpose, you lost who you are. Why, why do you think People will storm out and slam the door and never done that before when they don't feel like they're getting through. Because when their purpose is not met, then they'll do things they've never done before because it rattles the foundation of who they are. That's why people can, can walk out on God because they lost sight. Oh, wait a minute. I really wasn't in this thing so that pastor would pat me on the back. I, I forgot that wasn't the purpose. It's great, but it's not my purpose. 
I really wasn't in this thing to get a solo. It's great when I do, but that's not my purpose. Oh, God. All right, we're going to read. Amen. That was extra. Amen. Numbers chapter 16. Now Korah, the son of Izhar, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, and Dathan, and Abiram, and the sons of Eliab, and On, the sons of Pelot, the sons of Reuben, took men, and they rose up before Moses with certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation, men of renown. And they gathered themselves against Moses and against Aaron, and said unto them, You take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them. The Lord is among them. Wherefore then lift ye up yourselves above the congregation of the Lord. And when Moses heard it, he fell on his face. And he spake unto Korah and unto all his company, saying, Even tomorrow the Lord will show who are his and who is holy, and will cause him to come near unto him. Even him who he hath chosen will he cause to come near unto him. This do take you censers, Korah, and all the company, and put fire therein, and put incense in them before the Lord tomorrow. And it shall be that the man whom the Lord doth choose, he shall be holy. You take too much upon you, you sons of Levi. And Moses said unto Korah, Here I pray ye, ye sons of Levi, seemeth it but a small thing unto you, that the God of Israel hath separated you from the congregation of Israel to bring you near to himself to do the service of the tabernacle of the Lord and to stand before the congregation to minister unto them. And he hath brought thee near unto him and all thy brethren, the sons of Levi, with thee. And seek ye the priesthood also. For which cause both thou and all thy company are gathered together against the Lord. And with what is Aaron that you murmur against him? And Moses sent to call Dathan and Abiram and the sons of Eliab, which said, We will not come up. Um, I'm going to paraphrase the, the, the last little bit here real quick. They stand before the Lord and God calls Moses and Aaron into his presence. And at this point, judgment is found that God has chosen Moses and God has chosen Aaron. And the rest of Korah and his 250 men, the earth swallows them up. And they die and, and the earth comes back together. And there's a unique verse found later that says the sons of Korah did not die. Now, real quick, I tell you what, let's pray, let you sit down and I'll review real quick. Lord, we love you tonight. Thank you for what you're going to do in this place. God, I ask you to minister. Let the hand of God be upon us. Move in a mighty way in the name of Jesus Christ. Give us revelation. Give us understanding. God, open our hearts and give us, Lord, what you would speak to us tonight according to your word in Jesus' mighty name. And everyone say in Jesus' name. All right, I'm going to try to hurry tonight because I realize the hour is getting behind us. Uh, I want to read one more verse uh, uh, found in, in 1 Peter, and we'll, we'll get it here. 1 Peter chapter 5, and I'm going to read verse number 8, and I'm going to tie it all in before we leave here tonight. And if I don't get it tied in, then we'll try again next Wednesday night. Praise God. All right. Uh, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that he has suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. I want to draw your attention tonight to one little verse that says, Your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. So therefore you must be sober and you must be vigilant. And they can y'all can just keep that up there for me tonight if you don't mind. 